ancient Greeks and Romans were in awe of beauty. In sacking the city of Syracuse, the Roman army took care not to set fire to that quarter wherein there was a most beautiful painted panel. The Roman army also didn't kill the artisans, rather they brought them back to Rome where they carried on with the craft creating beautiful works of art. As a result, Rome became one of the most beautiful cities in the ancient world. The Roman Empire was associated not only with the military might, but with an awe-inspiring beauty that left one feeling as if they found themselves in the presence of some kind of higher being. Thus, one of the design tools the Roman artisans used was named the Golden Ratio, or the Divine Proportion. The Golden Ratio is one of several proportional relationships between shapes and spaces. You can find a lot of information about the mathematical beauty of the Golden Ratio from antiquity to today. In this video, I invite you to follow along with me as I think out loud and use Golden Ratio to create a landscape painting that is a representational artwork with a balanced design. First of all, I will not use a grid like many other artists suggest. The golden ratio grid when laid over artworks of the masters is a good way to introduce art students to the golden ratio. The golden ratio grid is an instrument. You can use it for better or for worse. For worse, it enslaves you. A grid placed over your canvas may become an artificial constraint, forcing you to follow those preset shapes and dictate what and where has to be placed, resulting in formulaic artworks. For better, it frees you to create. Using the golden ratio as a guiding principle to perfect the natural world you portray in your plein air paintings allows for greater freedom of creativity. It becomes a meaningful interaction between you, the artist, the natural world, and the divine. Thus, if you enter into the golden ratio relationship and respect it, the result is rewarding. This way, you develop an intuition for the golden ratio. Your eye becomes more and more fine-tuned to it. Thus, you acquire the freedom to create without sacrificing originality. I'll keep this paper towel so I could use it as an eraser. So I made myself a measuring stick. In the measuring stick I laid out all the notches for my golden ratio. If we take 36 inches length divided by 1.618 we get our cells 22 and a quarter inches and that proportion 36 by 22 and a quarter will be the golden ratio of proportion. We can take 22 and a quarter inches divided by 1.618 and we'll get ourselves 13 and three quarters. Then we'll just continue in that direction. So what we'll end up with is all the golden ratio measurements that will be for this painting. So if we take 13.75 divided by 1.618, the next number is going to be 8 and uh, 49, which means we can make it 8 and a half. The next number, if we keep dividing, we'll get five and a quarter and the next number will get three and a quarter and I'm rounding off obviously. The other two numbers, the smallest proportion if we continue will be basically two inches and 1.24. So on location because the clouds were changing, everything was passing, changing very rapidly, I had to sketch it in as quickly as I could to capture the whole feeling, the kind of clouds, the colors. Now I can come and start thinking about my composition, about my proportions, the, the kind of arrangement I want to get, the whole design of the painting, using a lot of these elements from reality, from real life, but now they're going to be redesigned 
to suit this composition for golden ratio, the divine proportions. So what does it mean? How do we translate it into a big canvas? We have this whole length. So this whole area is taking up the bottom portion of the canvas and the sky takes up majority of the canvas. How are we going to arrange it according to the golden ratio? So since this is our height, 22 and a quarter, this is my measuring stick, my choice now is to come in here and divide the land according to the golden ratio, which means I can start right here. I can say it's going to take up this much of my painting. What does it mean? It means that basically I took the height, 22 and a quarter inches, divided it by 1.618, I got my proportion, I got this number here compared to this number here, this is the division, the, which means that this portion of the sky will be proportionate to the portion of the land in the golden ratio proportion. So my next step is then to say, alright, so if my land can take up this much in general then this will be my sky but my land is not all the same it's sloping there is a a little bit of a flat area here F flatness into this hills then there is a slope there is flatness to the background hills all right so what does it mean that means that my land should definitely be somewhere in here as my flatter area. Then I need to decide how far this will come up. How soon it's going to be dropping, how soon this will be starting. So I can see here that it's already is a little bit to the left of center where this connection is happening. The foreground hill with the background hill is a little bit left of center and right under where the rainbow starts. So a little bit left of center, so my center is about right in about here. That means it could be coming down, meeting with the other hill, making that connection somewhere in this area. And somewhere in this area is a question where in this area somewhere in this area my hills are going to do something like this but where so again we're taking our golden ratio proportion the whole thing is 36 inches our next measurement is 22 and 22 and a quarter so what happens if we make them meet right in here according to the 22 and a quarter it will be, again, this whole distance will be golden ratio proportion to everything else that is starting to happen in this painting. Then we can say, all right, so then where is this going to be? Where is it going to start sloping? Okay, so we have our 22 and a quarter. We also have this measurement right here. This distance is the next size down from this whole distance. So it also fits in with our golden ratio. This, looking at that landscape and looking at this, it seems pretty good. It's fitting pretty well. All right. So that means that our hill can start sloping here. It's going to be hill kind of area here, coming a little bit down. Then it's going to come to this nice little rock and the hill is going to go up this way, bush, and I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm, I'm scaling it so this rock is not quite as close to the edge, so it's not quite as jammed in, and I'm leaving a little bit more of the hill. I can do that, I have the space for it. So this hill I would like to make it just a little bit higher 
for the sake of the interest we don't want to have everything exactly the same level we want this a little bit higher this is a little bit lower but within that size within that proportion close plus or minus so as the scale comes down this little tree pops up or a bush it touches on this line again giving us the same feeling of the golden proportion there is a little rock there is a little slope with plants and then this comes out here okay for now i'm going to leave it like this so now we need to get this slope this slope can also we know it's going to go right in this area where it will interact with the hill and back of it now we need to decide how slopey it's gonna go is it gonna go less of a slope is it gonna be a steeper slope where is it heading toward the bottom of the painting where do we want it to be heading at the bottom of the painting so where we want it to be heading is so it also fits within all of our gold ratio golden ratio proportions first here is my notch, here is my other notch. I have now lined up it with this edge of the painting, which can you can do that, or you can start on this end, it doesn't really matter. So I have one notch here, and I have another notch right here. Which way, obviously here it's going to be too steep, it will not be able to overlap with the other hill. If we do it this way, it will come to this position, portion of the painting on the bottom which means this distance here and this distance here are still our golden ratio proportions although this is a derivative of a, another one within this distance so this coming down here seems all right with the rest of the painting now uh, how will it interact because we, we wanted it to overlap in this area so what is the other possibility the other possibility is right here if we have it come over more like this would that work as well i'm going to use a little bit of artistic license and i'm going to add a little variation to this hill This way, this hillside is not all the same and not boring. Here we go, a gentle, a gentle jog in the hillside. So now we can have our rock formation come out and start heading toward this direction we got this natural um, forming this drop in here so let's see where our drop would be the best our drop could be right here if we kept everything on the other side of this hill at this point then it ends up being golden ratio again and that will give us the right proportions within which we can form our landscape so we can bring the rock formation just a little bit higher we can then plan what it will look like here And since this is also sloping, we are going to see where we can bring this slope to. We have this possibility or this possibility. This possibility seems a bit better. And based on how this hill is shaping up, we are going to bring it up this way to meet our rock formation nice little cliff in here 
nice little bunches of plants, nice little cliffy area coming down, and our hill is coming from behind it, and within this area we have a couple of rocks that are distinct features. So again, what are those rocks? Where are they going to be? Well, one of the rocks is kind of on the edge of this slope here. It starts sloping and then there is a rock. Let's put it right here and keep bringing the slope down. So here, a rough estimate for that rock. Then the slope continues up and there is another feature in here. So what we can do is we can say, all right, so within here, we have a choice of uh, saying, all right, we can put it like, start measuring it out this way. If we put the rock right in under this notch, it will also be within the golden ratio proportions. And according to the painting, the sketch, this is also a good position for that rock. So here we go. Here is a rock. Here is a rock, and all of them are positioned right within the golden ratio proportion. So while I'm here, I'll just roughly sketch the other rocks. Next step. So we have this hillside shaping up. We can still let go in here and adjust it and say, okay, but maybe not quite as swoopy. Raise this rock. Get it adjusted so it looks more natural and closer to what we are actually looking at over there. So it is recognizable and proportioned. All right, next step. Now we have this line that's continuing through, but this land is obviously slightly lower. All right, so what we'll do is we'll say this line can be continued by clouds. So some of these clouds will have to continue that design for us. This will be a, a horizontal cloud that will also continue somewhat on this side. And now on the other side, the land drops slightly, but by how much do we really want to drop it? So let's see, here are my measurements again. So I have this, and this is actually a good starting point from behind the rock to be coming out for this hillside. And so basically what we'll do is we'll move this up and we'll say from here to here, that's a good cutoff point. And that's where the mountain is going to go. Now within that, this is my distance that is golden ratio again. Within that and within this distance here, I have to position this mountain. Where will the peak be? The peak is slightly off of uh, this rock. It's slightly to the left of it. That will be my peak. This will be the rest of it. Then this will be coming down. Gently jogs over, comes down. Now there is a little hill in the back right there. That little bit far away little mountain. This one comes out kind of from behind here. It can still fit within this linear direction we had. And so 
this will be close to our golden ratio of how much that mountain is visible and how tall it is dictates is dictated by this line so that's what we'll do so now our changes are super gentle the changes in the angles are very very mild like that and see this line and this line that's exactly where we had it in the original painting so I'm just going to make this a teeny bit larger this comes over here this one drops goes behind so there we go so all of this ended up being adjusted to the golden ratio this cloud continues this direction this cloud here there is another cloud that's right above it we'll just lower it a little bit still is very close to continuing this measurement here all right so as far for for this end we are pretty good now we need to deal with this hillside here this is a lot of hillside uh, it's not like too much going on in there but still we can do something here uh, this one is all in the shadow this one is all in this more or less sunlight so let's uh, see what we can do with this one we can say all right one of the little sides could be coming down to here or one of the hillsides could be down, coming down to here. There are all these possibilities. What should we be doing? What would be the best thing to do? According to that, we can basically bring the sunny side right over here like that. In this path we also only have this path come somewhere where it would make more sense but we don't want it right in the corner so if we had it come right in here close to the corner but not all the way this is one possibility this is another possibility so imagine that it came down doing this and went off. Would that make good sense? Perhaps. Looks like we have this line, we have this line, we have this line, and they kind of have a feeling of the heel, hillside opening up like a fan. So, may not be a bad idea. So this is keeps for now. All right, now that I'm looking at this whole design, I feel like this is too much of the same distance too narrow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my heel a little bit I am going to move it right to here it will have to make it a little bit steeper but that's all. I'll take advantage of this jaggedy sort of look. I have to maintain this intersection. Now I'm going to check 
this distance here between this connection and this connection. This is close to my golden ratio. If only this came a little bit this way, but that doesn't much matter. And I'm going to check it and compare it to this one. This is the only thing so far that's bothering me. Same size here as it is here. Uh, same sizes is not very good. So what I'll go is I'll go to this side and I'll, I'll move my point a little bit. Like this. And that means that this side here just gotten a little bit steeper. So now I don't have that same sameness. It's now all slightly different. Next step. Got to deal with all the clouds. So we have this very big cloud that is the main attraction in our composition. So what are we going to do? We need to position it. The cloud is pretty big here. It takes up a lot of space. It feels a little jammed all around, which is fine for our study, but for the design, we want to redesign it, basically. How are we going to redesign? Now I can choose my cloud size. I can go from this notch to this notch and position my whole cloud like a huge thing coming down here. And that will be very close to that cloud. It, it is right here. I can make it right here. It ends right there, so I can end it right here. Have a little room for all the stuff. I probably could do this. with the stretched out portions coming down like this and this bigger portions coming down like that with my rainbow somewhere in here. I could do that. But do I want to do that? Feel how this whole big cloud, all of this will be like nearly white with the streaks coming down, all of this being darker. Look how it looks in proportion to the whole painting, to the land. It looks pretty big, so I feel like it still feels like it's too much of a cloud for the whole painting. It wants to breathe here and breathe there. It wants to feel like there's still some distance to go there, that it's not gonna get off the painting too quickly and out of view. So my next possibility is to take this size. My next possibility is to make my cloud about this size. So Imagine if this was my cloud and it was coming down here, it was coming down here with all of that. If I had more of the lower clouds over here, a few smaller clouds all around and the more little clouds over here. Now how does that feel with the rainbow? right in here with the rain streaks right like that feels like there is more breathing room that proportionally it's better for all of these proportions for the rest of it and there is more breathing here breathing here m enough space for it to move seems better now let's simply adjust its position so we know the cloud should be somewhere within with this, within this dimension. Now let's see. Should it be like right in here? Or if this is our center, we don't want it to be like super on center. We want it to be slightly off center. 
so this is our center. We don't want this to be exactly to the same halves. We want it to be slightly off-center. Which way off-center? More this way or more that way? There is all this, it's sort of looking like a jellyfish, all this tentacles of the jellyfish coming off. All of this is like a very beautiful kind of lacy look in the clouds. We want to give it enough space here. We also want to give it enough forward movement with this flatter, stretchy, narrow clouds. With this, we can be stretching that to give it more forward movement. So let's see what where uh, this comes to. So if we took this proportion here, and said that this will be this edge of the cloud. That distance and this distance are golden ratio. Within our golden ratio, where would we end our cloud if we went with this notch over here, which means this space is more, this space is less, it's the next one over. That will give us this shape. With this movement starting in this direction, now let's take and make sure that our width of the cloud is also somewhere in the golden ratio proportion which is if our lighter sun illumin illuminated area is right here, that makes a lot of sense. This distance here becomes also a golden proportion for this distance. Now, if this is shaping up to be our main cloud. Step back and look how does it look? How is the overall position? Doesn't seem too bad actually. A few other clouds that are popping up here. I'll just be adding them in. This ones, we want to continue them. So what I'm looking is I'm looking for this darker edge here, its shape, and if it's going to give us enough interest in here, and interest in here compared to interest over here. Alrighty. So how can we also make sure that this area looks within our good proportions. So let's see, this is close to this one, this is close to this proportion here. So let's say if I could extend it a little bit, then that will be a nice proportion. This whole stream of clouds here, how far should I stretch it? I could stretch it I could say, okay, this arm of a cloud will come and stop right here, or it can come all the way to here. What would be better? I think longer will make it look more like a longer movement, like it's really stretching out, opening up. So longer is better. All I need to know, uh, uh, make sure that I don't lose this and like this is an important and this little cloud is coming out here perhaps that one would be stretching out as well maybe it will be ending here maybe not I'll, i can decide on that later then this shape here also how far we want it to come out that looks like a pretty good proportion here for this overall this shape how tall it looks like it could be less or it could be a little bit more or we can also look at it as in this direction 
in which case then we can make this arm right here look at it as this shape we can make this arm come out more like that arm tentacle and that will give us another one of our well close not quite there but close let's just make it a little bit longer then now we also want to see where this linear clouds are starting this leads into this direction this also has a fan like motion so what is happening is that i'm starting to pick up on the developing composition that has this fan motion kind of like all of this is going in this direction as the composition develops some of the clouds can follow more in this direction then they will start to follow in this direction and up then they will become linear nearly horizontal then it will go with my hill slope and then my hill in itself has also a fan motion opening up like this like this and like this so i have this whole fan motion all throughout which means everything flows somewhere out of here and basically opens up in this direction and that suggests all the movement going in there as well which is a good thing to have in the landscape it helps us feel the movement of everything all right so this before i work too much on this i have to think about all of these distances so we already know we want to have some of our clouds right here but this group of clouds is somewhere in here but where exactly do we want that group of clouds here's my notch that group of clouds has to be most suggestive of this line here Alrighty, so uh, and in the drawing it's actually very similar uh, in the study it's very similar so let's go with that there is a little bit of a gap in the clouds another one is coming right in here or perhaps what I'll do is rather than stretching it all that far I will bring it more to here like that stretching it any longer may be just too much so that means that we will just do this here all of these clouds here and this direction coming out from here these clouds come a little bit above our line all the other final details will be decided later now we just want to indicate the general direction basic idea and we want to indicate some of this big cumulus clouds building very far away okay here's one that is rising rather high in here all right so now these clouds are taking up this space these are over here we've established that we can now go next to figuring out the tentacles of the jellyfish here get a little more detail into this 
nice shapes. Now, let's see, within this cloud we have this shape, this shape, and this shape. Let's see if any of them, this is close enough to this proportion. This whole thing is out of our proportion, but let's see about this one. This one here is close to this proportion. This one could, have, could be smaller, and this one could be could stay pretty much the same size or if it becomes bigger uh, making the smaller doesn't quite work out but I think this would be better if this one was, was a little smaller like only two here That's a bit better. So now this is slightly out of proportion, but if it came down to here, it would be maybe a little bit better. Over here, we can still, yeah, we can move that. got an interesting cloud shape and these clouds are going in this direction these clouds are coming down in here over here there's a little bit more of the lighter portion right in here before it starts raining down there's a little bit of the shadow here another darker cloud coming out going in this direction starts changing shape a little bit coming down this way touching down with these clouds right somewhere under the rainbow so if it touches down right here and our rainbow is somewhere in here that will work the next thing I'm going to shape this arm of the cloud blue sky here this area tapers off right into that just shape it more or less the way it is over there and now let's see how this is shaping up. Any of this are close to our proportions. Pretty much, yes. Which is good. That's good. So we're still staying within the same proportions, but we're not stressing over to make everything exactly proportionate. So there is this kind of movement here similar to this so I need to make sure that I have something like this going in here as well plus maybe a little bit of irregularity all right so now this is shaping up to be wider next with narrowest and that's what we have here narrow wider widest that seems like we've gotten it positioned pretty good 
The only thing I'd say is we'd probably better raise this to kind of help this a bit, that kind of movement. This movement here also goes into this. So it all feels like it's part of the same movement. That's why we should probably raise this. And remember what we did with that? Okay, that goes away. Now it wants to be right in here somewhere. Let's see if this is better. That's better for our golden ratio. What about this one? This one is not bad as well. So now this area obviously is what we have in here, but it goes off of the canvas. But that's not a problem. What I can do is get majority of these clouds in here and then fill that by looking at the photo I took when I was painting just to see what these clouds are doing here and then here which kind of tells me that something is still going on little bits of white popping through which is what I'll look at and finish up and same thing here so this area in here it indicates that there were some other clouds up above and those clouds were mostly white and so we can go in and add a few clouds, some bigger, some smaller, little bits and pieces. That's not super important as to the size and shape so far. The most important thing is right now to get the majority of the composition balanced. So I'm looking at this cloud here, how, how high I want it lining up with this. I want it a little bit up and there's my nice size that I can do right here according to my golden ratio. Here we go. This cloud can be starting right here, smaller, a little taller right like that. Here's my little cloud proportionally adjusted. The other two, okay, let's say there's one little one, like a little bit right here. Okay, let's do that one. This one. How long should that be? Well, we have this one this size and this one this size. They don't want to have two of the same exact length. So let's make this cloud go into that one. So we'll make this one a little bit longer where we can combine the length into this much. And that's good. So we'll combine the length. this big one that's actually coming out of, of that. It's like a little break off. Okay. But how much is that coming off? We can say, okay, it can measure from here to here. We can measure it from here to here. This one, this one seems like a nice little shaping up here. that looking looking pretty good 
stepping back not bad some of the clouds go off so let's do that so let's say okay this cloud this was just a line not even a cloud let's clean it up this is like coming in almost out going out so there's this kind of irregular stepping that's good so along that we have this cloud coming up there is a little bit of another cloud kind of supporting that movement up so let's bring this cloud make it a little bit bigger but line it up with this movement here Let's see if there are any of these good proportions. Yeah, this is close, pretty close, so we can improve this one by making it a little shorter. should we have this one here but it feels like it wants to have something a little bit longer so I think another one somewhere in here going off page will look good as well we don't want to have any of this sizes the same everything has to be very different nothing of the same sizes this looks like it's going to be too much of the same opening so let's make sure that it is not the same Is that too much? Yeah, maybe it is too much. Leave this open. Because also what happens is as the clouds are seen closer to the horizon, they get closer and closer together. That's the perspective. And as they come up in the sky, the distances between them open up because we're seeing more of the sky as opposed to here everything is much more compressed closer to the horizon and so we want to see that in the distances as we have that we want to have that feel of opening up and using this as a guideline let's say it's from here to here then from here to here will be exactly the same so obviously that means that we better make sure that this clouds here and here help us see that this is closer and this is even closer then this will be seen as further apart this is further apart and then if any of these clouds were up here, then they would be even further apart. So that provided they are the same distance in the sky from each other, which obviously it isn't. So there is that variation. You can see that from here to here, this cloud is almost the same distance as this one's. So by having this little one in between, and we should probably move this one a little lower to help make feel like this one is even higher. Maybe something in here as well. Maybe not. Just a thought for now. Okay. So 
pretty much short of looking at the photo to finish this area. This composition is laid out. What do you think, Clara? Mm, I like the shape of the cards. Uh -huh. The only other thing I think is since we have this slope here that is echoed in the slope indicated by these clouds, I think it would be a good idea to make sure that there is something over here that also echoes it. Not only we have our fan composition fanning out in all these directions, but we also have this as a general slope. This is almost following the slope. The bottom of the cloud is almost following the slope. This, this clouds line up. The top nearly lines up. And so if we just had more of the groups of little choppy clouds in here, then they would too make it kind of like an echo of this movement. Yeah, so, I was kind of thinking the same. Yeah. Like there, it feels like maybe there should be something more over there. Uh huh. The design wise. And so, because this is becoming like a more pronounced line between the darker clouds, right? Then there is going to be this popping sky forming almost a line. And then there's this hill. Overall, the hill is coming down in this direction and this and then this. It doesn't have to be the same slope, so this is more slope and this is slightly less slope, but it can be more like that, right? So it's just more sky in here and a little more whitish clouds over there. Alright, so just by looking at my photo and here I see that there is this shape, yes, there is this little kind of choppy faint cloud here, that's good. There is a little bit more of a cloud splitting off from here toward this cloud direction. There is a few clouds right here, kind of forming a little way same direction there is a little bit of a cloud bunches of little tiny clouds right in here here random more random so there's like a patch of sky here a patch of sky here And then there is actually a bigger, whiter, poofier cloud right in here that goes off canvas and out of view. And there is another one of these arms, actually this is stretching out and continuing into another bigger poofier cloud. I'm just looking at the plain design aspects of it. How do all the little patches of sky look like from 
a distance in the context to the whole thing. Do they look nice? Are there any weird shapes? Do they look like there is anything like they they make any strange shape like a dog face or any other kind of face? Does it look nice and lacy? Does it look like too regular, too lined up, too predictable? All of this needs to be considered. Don't want anything predictable. Alright, so we're getting back to it after a little break. Everything is drawn out. Um, I let it sit. I looked at it. I imagined how it would look finished based on my study. I tried to get the feeling of what all of these areas are going to be like, where in terms of lights, darks, colors, and based on that, I'm going to make slight adjustments. I got the feeling for the balance in here. The proportions are pretty much all there. I just now have to adjust it based on how the final thing is shaping up. Where there is a few tweaks that need to be done. So from what you can see and looking at the study you can see that we're going to have a lot of blue sky in here that will be a big mostly blue area that will be attracting attention by its size it has a certain shape to it even if I have bits of white clouds in here smaller white clouds kind of breaking up the blue most of this will read like a basically big blue triangle now I have to look at that triangle, bits of blue sky coming through between these clouds, and this tri tri mostly triangular area will be counterbalanced by this blue sky here popping through, which now I have to decide how much is there in terms of balance. Now, set against that, 
majority of this portion of the cloud will be very bright and all different shades of pretty much white. Slightly darker values within, little peacher, little yellower spots in the clouds, but most of this will read as a big white sort of almost elliptical kind of shape in here. Now looking from it from the distance, looking at it from the distance, you get to feel that interaction between the blue sky here and this patch of blue sky. Even though it may be broken up by the clouds, it will feel like it because there is the edge of the painting here. There is a definite irregular edge of this cloud here. Little bits of this clouds are almost forming another edge here at kind of like at an angle like this or slightly rounded arched form. This cloud stretching out in this direction forming this kind of linear uh, composition here. And so what we're going to be seeing once it's painted is all this blue sky and even all of this in another broken up form. They'll read really well against the clouds and we'll be comparing it to this here. And this feels like a whole lot more air and a whole lot more space for that cloud to move into that direction and to fill it because especially all of these portions of the clouds have this upward motion. And of course they are upward. These are further away clouds. There are far, further away clouds that are also cumulus thunder clouds. And this one is in front of us and it feels like it's coming up from those more distant ones. The ones that are more in the distance going horizontally. And out of them rises up comes up this cloud higher in the sky and closer to us therefore. And so it feels like it does need that space to go into. So it's going to be moving to the left and it's going to be moving slightly up. And it feels like a good space for it to fill. My next uh, concern, my next thinking is perhaps this shape here could be slightly narrowed down. I'm thinking about that, not 100% sure. I'm imagining how it would be if I just narrowed it down because it does feel a little like a little narrower point here on this end. Uh, that may help it to kind of come down a little bit here and follow into this motion of all this other white poofy little clouds coming out. Um, it might be just simply shape-wise, flow-wise, everything is being blown by the wind, therefore there's a certain flow that it's following. So when something is like flowing with a certain direction and you feel the flow in all other shapes, suddenly another shape doesn't quite follow that flow, doesn't lead into another shape, it starts to feel a little off. So I'm thinking that maybe just shave it off a little, give it a little bit more of the flow like it's really wanting to connect with this uh, cloud or maybe this cloud broke off of here and it still is kind of stringy reaching out like it didn't quite totally disconnect. So that sounds like a better idea. Then looking at my photo. My phone photos are not very good. I have a very cheap phone but it at least tells me what what was going on more on this side because I didn't capture it in the study and it tells me that there is just another bigger cloud that fills this space. So my thinking is, is that all of this breathing room and space for this cloud to fill as it goes there is good less of the blue sky and maybe enlarge this cloud and maybe move this one slightly closer might be a good idea. So connect this to shave this off, connect this, make this a little bit bigger, give this blue sky a little bit more of a carved out shape. So all of these shapes in here, all of this, if you just think about it as the kind of irregular shapes of the sky they all come out as like, huh, interesting, you know, a little bigger opening, smaller opening, they're kind of squiggly, they're kind of very irregular, unpredictable, all that is good. We want to keep the unpredictability. Predictable means 
man-made means calculated, too even, too artificial, doesn't feel right. Everything in nature is unpredictable, not fully pre predictable, not fully symmetrical, not fully calculated and measured out. So we sense that irregularity is being natural it's more exciting as we follow with our eyes all these irregular shapes we that unpredictability is exciting to us it's like we're discovering more and more so even if you don't know what those clouds were doing here even if you don't have the reference for the rest of it knowing how all of these areas are behaving in the clouds from your study you can fill this in just by following the same kind of uh, patterns that the other clouds moved uh, in uh, heaven here and do this uh, same type of unpredictability. Then after the clouds I think I'm, I'm thinking about this big dark area. All of this area here is pretty much in the shadow of the cloud. The hill is pretty dark. Um, I made this here just to give this slope a little more interest but on the second look I was thinking that perhaps it was a little too much so I'm thinking perhaps shaviness off around here uh, therefore getting rid of this portion filling it with, with more clouds I actually look at here and I see like actually there were a lot more clouds that might be actually better to fill this area here before I, uh, they hide behind this slope. Keeping this connection point because remember this was our proportion so we can still keep it we just need to lower it and have the same idea over here. Uh, then I was looking at the shapes over here so this further away hill seems like it could be made smaller uh, like sh less of it showing either that or so for instance this mountain here could also be slightly moved but we uh, I've already kind of committed to this distance here which I like how much I'm giving it it's closer to us so it should be more massive the further away hill should be less and so I was just thinking that perhaps I could extend this hill a little bit to this point by simply changing the slope so I, I'm not moving this mountain at all I'm just giving it a little bit um, different angle of the slope and once I've done that I could then uh, change this hill to be a little bit shorter and then I could change the other hill in the back to be adjusted for that so I think that's what I'm gonna jump in and do so rather than totally in, like erasing everything what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just make this mark. This is what I'm aiming for. Perhaps I can just lower it like that. So it is the same distance. So here's my notch over here, my notch over here. And I'm going to go ahead and raise the hill a little bit which means this rock will have to just come up a bit more this can stay this can stay this can be raised and this rock simply needs to be raised a bit in exactly the same position just everything is a little bit higher and we're still landing in the same point here same in terms of proportional to the as we did before same proportions 
So proportions are not changing, just the shape is changing a little bit. So there is a little bit of a sort of rock popping through here and another one popping right here. These are just tiny little references. I'm not stressing over the correctness of the shapes. So now this hill here, simply we need to bring it right to this point. We're going to do this, kind of repeat the same shape, maintain the height, just make it slightly less shapely less of a severity to the shape here. And the mountain in the back. Could make it a lot smaller, but now that I'm looking at it, this size, same as this, actually is not bad. It works. So we're keeping the same size. Just probably bring it a little bit lower on this end. There we go. Giving it a little bit more interesting shape. Let's see what we can do with our heel in the front here. We still want to have this connection point here. We just want to have these bushes come down a little lower. We want the irregularity in here as well. The bushes never grow regularly, so we want that irregularity. All right, so it's a little bit slicker, a little more slender. Also keep in mind that these are bushes, not huge trees, so this is like a lot of bushes together. Once in a while you might have a bigger shrub among them, like about 10, maybe at the most 15 feet high. This is a relatively nice shrub in here. There is a nice flow shaping up here, coming down, coming down coming down. So now we can get our clouds adjusted here. So there's that bigger cloud that I remember as it was building up and changing right in front of my eyes. Instead of having it all kind of the same, makes this one a little taller, this one's lower, medium. Slim it down a bit. There we go. So now look how the sky reads. Standing back often helps a lot to be able to judge the overall effect. I definitely want to have this cloud also lead into this cloud. So not only it feels like it just broke off from here, but it also feels like this is also connected. Maybe this whole thing separated at one point and now is semi-connected with little bits of uh, cloud material. Painting the rest of this artwork is less about the golden ratio and more about color harmony, values and brushwork. If you would like to see and listen to how I painted the rest of this work, let me know in the comment section. So this is how this painting was designed. But wait, 
Wasn't I supposed to tell you about the golden ratio grid, spiral and how to use them? As you can see, I wasn't using those to start or finish this painting. What I did was choose the right sizes of the main elements in this composition according to a mathematical formula, the golden ratio. First, I sized my main window, the linen panel. Then, I sized the len to sky proportion, followed by choosing proportional size elements within the len and the sky. As my composition progressed, my tendency to place my design elements where they had to be without measuring became intuitive. So is golden ratio all you need to design a successful composition? Definitely no. Golden ratio is not a trick, not a secret, not a must-follow rule of design. Golden ratio is, well, a mathematical ratio. It is a relationship between units that shows harmonious unity of three-dimensional multiplicities. As it manifests itself in nature, we feel it and call it beauty. In art, it's an ideal to strive toward. So let's see how my painting compares to the golden ratio grid and spirals. Here's the grid for all four spirals. Here I added a few diagonals. You can see how my horizontal and vertical lines correspond to what I was measuring with my measuring stick. See how many intersections fall on or very close to main features of the shapes in the landscape. See how the mountain slopes and edges of clouds, even the distant clouds and small portions of the path, come close to following the golden ratio diagonals. The mountain tops seem to be striving toward the golden ratio triangles. Those little dark clouds also follow a diagonal, so does the white offshoot from the main cloud. In a way, the path diagonal orientations line up with the tentacles of the cloud and point to the rainbow. You can see how this composition is aided by the path, which in turn helps you feel as if you're invited to ascend up the mountain and fly with these clouds right through the rainbow. Now let us look at the main cloud. How does it correspond to the golden ratio? Let's add the first spiral. See how the left upper cloud side has the same curvature as the spiral, and they almost line up. Let's add another spiral. Now we see how the right upper cloud side compares to the second spiral. Let's add the last two spirals. These are the features that fall into or close to the spiral centers. Out of four features, these two have busier designs and they are diagonally opposite. And these two opposites don't have any special designs. One is a part of a cloud near the cloud's edge, and the other is a part of a hillside near its highest point. The rock formation and distant white clouds near the lower left spiral center is a more interesting feature of the four and attracts attention, though that attention comes second to the main cloud and the rainbow. Its diagonal opposite the busy irregular edges of the main cloud are good for compositional balance and rightly are less attention-seeking. These two features are less conspicuous. The counterbalance is happening without competing for attention, and that is good. Abstractly, the main cloud is a golden ratio rhombus. The rainbow divides it almost in half. We also find that the rainbow is placed on the diagonal of yet another golden ratio rectangle. And is mimicking the curvature derived from one of the golden ratio squares. 
I hope you got some ideas and learned something useful from this video. If you have questions, let me know in the comment section.